Crashing through the lies and disinformation, it's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. Waging war on corruption, Monday through Friday, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Central. Back Sundays, live, 4 to 6 p.m. Central. Weeknights, 7 o'clock, InfoWars Nightly News, hosted by myself and the rest of the great InfoWars team. We are not just the new media dominating the old dinosaur media. We are the hardest working team in media because we're fueled by the love of liberty. All right, continuing here, and then I'm going to shift gears into all the other news. This is a big deal, what's happening. The kickoff of a new Cold War, that's even what the New York Times is calling it. It's a serious situation, and the West is so much more immoral than it was in the 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s by every metric, by every legal maxim, by every university study. Press freedoms are out the window. Financial freedoms are out the window. Surveillance is out of control. We are becoming like the old Soviet Union, as Russia is becoming more unfree as well in many ways. And it is a race to the bottom. So we don't have the moral high ground here. And the average American doesn't even know what's going on over there. It's kind of like they have these events now, and it's, yeah, it's kind of in the news, but a background thing. Hey, the Oscars are on, you know, and did you hear what was going on with Justin Bieber today? Meanwhile, Russian troops are not going to blink, folks. They didn't with Napoleon or Hitler or the United States. And I'm not comparing the United States to Hitler and Napoleon. I'm just saying they didn't over and over again. It was, it was internal corruption that brought them down. And they've built back up to a certain extent, and this is not a good situation. And you notice right as the dollar's in trouble, right as those world economic problems, every forecaster's told you, from Gerald Salente to Jim Rogers to Mark Faber to myself to countless others, it's a historical fact, the card is to go to war. It was that way 5,000 years ago. It was that way 300 years ago. It's a good political diversion. The Iranians like war and don't want to be peaceful, their government, because it lets them take their people's liberties. The Israelis like a state of war because it lets them control their people. The American government likes a state of war or crisis because it lets them control the people. The Germans are the same. Pretty much everybody is historically. And the fact that we can't even recognize that is why we're in so much trouble. And the Russians have a little bit of the moral high ground. They've got a lot of problems. They've been trying to influence Ukraine. There's a lot of issues, but it's in their backyard. And our government, run by offshore banks, is starting this. So I don't side with the Russians in it. It's just we don't have the moral high ground. And I don't support anything if I don't have the moral high ground. Because it's, it's, you reap what you sow. And I've looked at all the angles of this. It's a bad situation. Now, continuing, Obama got asked a few days ago, at a Democratic uh, Party event, the story's up on Infowars.com. Hey, are you worried about nuclear war with Russia? You know, we don't want to sit here and hear about how great Obamacare is, the great screw job in the sky, and you know, or or how we're all uh, you know believe in global freeze our butts off if we don't pay Al Gore carbon taxes. You know, now it's global cooling; they want you to pay them taxes for when you breathe. President Obama was well into a speech at Democratic National Committee summit on Friday. When someone in the crowd said, Mr. Obama, tell us about your plans for nuclear war with Russia. The man shouted, according to a transcript released by the White House. And they are moving nuclear weapons into the area. They are moving missiles to shoot down the Russian response. The Russians are freaking out, getting encircled. Let me tell you, if, if the Russians were moving missiles into Mexico, I'd be upset. If Russians were moving missiles into Cuba, I'd say, take it out of there. We're going to blow your butt off. Just like what happened during the, the Cuban Missile Crisis. This is very provocative. Of course, the U.S. moved missiles into Turkey is why the Russians moved them into Cuba. We came within inches of nuclear war, folks, and most of us wouldn't be here today. It'd be a whole different future if that would happen. And the Rand Corporation was ready for it. That's what Dr. Strangelove's all about. Real Rand Corporation plans from two years before that Stanley Kubrick got where they wanted to survive a nuclear war and have the elite go in the bunkers for a few years and then regroup and take down the whole world and set up a world government. The elite is ready to have a nuclear war. I'm not. Even if I had passcodes to the underground bunkers with nuclear power and swimming pools and, you know, a pleasure servants for the elite, I would not want to be part of that because I'm not a mass murderer. I'm not insane. 
And in Dr. Strangelove, the, the, the president plays the part of a Kennedy character, played by Peter Sellers, and the generals are explaining, we need to go ahead and have this nuclear war, you know, that Curtis LeMay wants to have. They call him Jack T. Ripper in the film. All later came out, this is actually what went on. The CIA actually came to Kubrick and said, how do you know all this? That came out on record, and I've talked to the family and confirmed it. And all of this type of stuff goes on. Well, he just had sources. It was well known and later came out. They were they The Joint Chiefs, headed up by L.L. Lemnitzer, Curtis LeMay, and others, wanted to have nuclear war with Russia so they could have a planetary government run by Pax Americana that wouldn't be an American system, a fascist system. And so all I'm telling you is don't think that Obama and the people controlling him won't pull something like this. This is in the cards. I'm not saying it's going to happen. So let's go to Obama acting like he doesn't know what the heckler's talking about, asking a real question. You know, we don't want to hear about the Oscars or how you're going to be on Jimmy Fallon or how you're a big movie star, how beautiful your wife that looks like a snapping turtle is. We don't want you to be a celebrity in our face, force-fed every day. Everyone rejects you. We hate you. We don't like you, con artist. Let's go to the clip. I'm sorry. I'm who, sorry. Who, who, who's that back Let there? Let me act confident in front of all my idiot followers. What, what the heck are you talking about? And again, you can barely hear the guys. Nuclear war. We're worried about nuclear war. <laughs> he, he laughs at it. That's funny. Russian troops are pouring in. If anybody crosses them, they're gonna, they've said like in 2008 in Georgia, they're going to launch nuclear attacks on Europe. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> don't worry about it. We're, 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 we're okay. We're out of the seat. Yeah, yeah, don't worry about him. The, uh, By the way, you notice it was bad enough. About that plan. It was bad enough when they would chant USA when anyone questioned Bush. That was cult like enough. But Obama, Obama, Obama. Did you hear that? Obama, Obama. He's like, it's okay. Don't even listen to that guy. Yeah, don't listen. The Oscars are coming up in a couple days. You know, we're about to have nuclear war. There's a good chance it could happen. It almost happened in Syria. But the Joint Chiefs said this could cause nuclear war with Russia and Obama backed down at a midnight meeting. But just don't even worry about that, kooks. You know, we don't worry about that. Here he is, U.S. prepares to recall diplomats, impose sanctions, and Representative Mike Rogers, I was calling him a senator, I promoted him, chairman of the Select Intelligence Committee, uh, came out and had this to say uh, about the situation in the Ukraine. President Obama has been handling relations with Russia versus how Vladimir Putin has been handling relations with the United States. Well, I think Putin is playing chess and I think we're playing marbles. And I don't think it's even close. So if you look at the nuclear negotiations, we got our fannies handed to us. They took tactical nukes out of the equation. Huge mistake, especially for our allies in the, in the Baltics. Uh, when you move down the list uh, in, in uh, uh, Syria, the Russians got everything that they needed. They believed they needed in Syria. And so we've, they've, they've been running right, circles right around there. us. And I think it's the... You know why the Russians are running circles around us when they can barely keep their lights on? Because our government funded 200,000 al-Qaeda jihadis to come out of Iraq and out of Turkey and out of Jordan to blow up hundreds of churches and kill people in Syria. And it made Assad, a bad guy, look like Jesus compared to that. Because he basically is. That's why, Representative Rogers, we are look like fools because we have an evil policy and the world sees it. Big Brother. Mainstream media. Government cover-ups. You want answers? Well, so does he. He's Alex Jones on the GCN Radio Network. And now, live from Austin, Texas, Alex Jones. Let's make this a year of action. That's what most Americans want. Raising the debt ceiling does not increase our debt. Nobody is listening to your telephone calls. The debate is settled. Climate change is a fact. And if people can't trust not only the executive branch, but also don't trust Congress and don't trust federal judges, then we're going to have some problems. Here. What difference at this point does it make? That's right. Everything's fine. Everything is cool. The Oscars are on tonight. Don't worry about the Russian troops pouring into Ukraine. Don't worry about George Soros going in there and stirring it all up and kicking out the elected president with a bunch of armed thugs. Don't worry about the leadership being neo-Nazis that actually wear giant swastikas. 
No, no. There's been big storms in California, folks, and it might mess up the Oscars. I mean, oh, my gosh. I'm going to run home tonight, and I'm going to sit there and watch those movie stars and just get so into it. Because everything is awesome, everything's cool when you're part of a team. Doesn't matter if your health care doubles. Doesn't matter if you can't get the brain tumor removed and you die. Because everything is awesome. I'm part of the Obama cult. That is, of course, the Lego theme song of the Lego movie, which is an excellent, I think, libertarian film. It got attacked by some neocons as being anti-corporate. It wasn't anti-corporate. It was anti-Agenda 21 non-liberty. I, I think it had a very positive message. So let me just recap the big top story and then segue into everything else here as the dam breaks out of the top story 35 minutes into worldwide transmission on this live Sunday edition. Ukraine mobilizes after Putin's declaration of war. That's Reuters. And they're calling it a declaration of war that they took a tiny peninsula area and a military base that they already had. So there you go. And I'm not defending Russia. I'm just saying the media is totally spinning this and talking about sanctions on Russia and NATO troops going in. Yeah, that's a wonderful idea when the West just fomented an overthrow of a government over there. I mean, it, it's just it's not good. I mean, it'd be one thing if they overthrew it to replace it with a republic and people being able to own guns and liberty. You could at least argue it was moral. They're putting in an EU George Soros kleptocracy where the EU sucks the country dry. You know, if I had a choice between George Soros and Putin, I might take Putin. I mean, I've just about had enough of George Soros who runs media organizations sworn to shut me down, who write lies about me every week. I'm not under attack by Vladimir Putin. I'm under attack by George Soros, who finances anti-free speech stuff in Congress. I mean, he's a guy over here squatting on America with Cloward and Piven and get you on welfare. And he's a huge recipient, along with Warren Buffett, of government bailouts. It, you know, that's who's in my life, not Vladimir Putin. Listen, Vladimir Putin gets in my life, he can go to hell. Never been to Russia. I don't have any one drop of Slavic blood, nothing against those people, like their music, their culture. But here's the deal. I'm an American, and I got George Soros on my back, not Vladimir Putin. Understand? I see a Russian around here telling me what to do. I'll kick their ass. But I'm here to tell you, folks, I haven't seen one Russian going around telling me what to do. You understand that? And I mean that figuratively. Politically, in the info war, I will stomp them into the ground. Russia attacks any interest. I'll call for war with them. I'll call for limited war to push him out of that area, not nuclear. And then we'd have the moral high ground, and Russia might have a war with us that was just conventional. But you move into their homeland, their border, you move into the Crimea that's generally been with Russia throughout history, you are opening the door for them to launch nuclear attacks, folks. And then there goes your Oscars tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and worshiping LeBron James, okay? So that's what's going on, a giant crisis and it could be orchestrated behind the scenes between the globalists and Putin for all I know so much stuff is rigged I don't know okay I'm not romanticizing any side of this this is a serious situation meanwhile the uh, neocon Trotskyites here in the U.S. that's who funded and founded the neocons they had neocons last week claiming I'm some type of communist when I'm a total libertarian on record von Mies Institute type person and then meanwhile, the neocons were founded by the Trotskyites, by Trotsky, who ran to the U.S. and then Mexico and got killed in Mexico by a Stalinist. So they created the fake conservative movement to take over conservatism and kill opposition. I love them criticizing me when they've got their sock puppet uh, Al-Qaeda running roughshod over the Russians. Right sector calls on Russia's bin Laden to fight in Ukraine. Doku Umarov, leader of the Islamic Caucasus Emirate, an Al-Qaeda affiliate in the Caucasus, has now put out a videotape. And uh, the right sector, the ultra-nationalist street fighting group that targeted police prior to the coup in Ukraine with firearms, shooting police that weren't doing anything to them. That's very freedom fighter. It's just to shoot cops that aren't doing anything to you. Uh, I mean that as sarcasm, folks. I don't call for that. I'm saying that's bad. Has called Doku Umarov to fight in a war against Russia. Yay, let's have Al-Qaeda attack the Russians. They're freedom fighters. I'm going to vomit here in a minute. I'm going to totally